Figure four, homily.com slash wrestlingobserver.com. A very exciting night here on the program. As Vinny and I will be reviewing the main event number one. Mm -hmm. Which is not Saturday night's main event. It's the main event number one. Aired on a Friday night. Unlike all of these other Saturday night's main event shows that we review, this show was live. Mm -hmm. Boy, was it ever. (laughs) <laughs> and for those of you watching along, video.f4wonline.com, all of our lovely video followers, what is this sitting right here on my desk? Why, it's the Winged Eagle. I see. I presented see. to me by a fine man who happened to be named Sam Fines. That's how <laughs> fine he is. For my years of service in radio and podcasting, Presented to me on the Christmas show. I have it here for all of you to see tonight. Why? Because, in fact, it was the main event. 1988 NBC. In front of 33 million people. That the Winged Eagle was debuted to WWF fans around the world. It's where it all began, Vinny. It is. That's where this journey all began. What a beautiful it, belt it is. It looks great, doesn't it? You realize there are people that don't think that this is the greatest championship belt of all time. What is wrong with people? Oh, they're, they're, they're differing opinions and they're strange viewpoints. It's ridiculous. How dare they? It's ridiculous. You're, you're sitting here telling them the truth and they refuse to listen. It's big. It's gold. That's what she said. It's got an eagle on it. That's not what she said. It's winged. Nor is that. It's just beautiful, Vinny. Mm. And Hulk Hogan debuted it. And the funniest thing was, they made no mention no. of the debut of the Winged Eagle. Nothing. No. Now, before we get into the review of the show, I have a couple of notes on it because it was a very, very, very newsworthy show. As we, it sure was. <laughs> as we talked about a couple of a couple of weeks ago. This was the show. Where the Honky Tonk Man refused to do the job for the Macho Man Randy Savage. Because, in fact, there were 33 million people watching. And I don't know all of the details, okay? But, obviously, Vince, when the show started, when the show went on the air, he said, this is the biggest crowd in the history of televised professional wrestling the, the biggest viewing audience thank you yes tv audience yes. yes now he's he's wrong i mean it was in america but there were matches in japan ricky dozan versus the destroyer 70 million viewers in japan mind you in japan in i forget the year i think it was late 50s but yeah. i mean the fact of the matter is I mean, every single person, every single solitary person with a TV pretty much watched that match. Yes. Uh, this year was obviously 1988. And, uh, I mean, 33 million, don't get me wrong. 33 million watching this, that was almost three times the number of people that watched Raw and Nitro combined during the peak of the Monday Night Wars. Sure. The absolute... Peak, peak, peak was 11, 12 million viewers combined between the two shows. This did 33 million viewers on a Friday night, I might add. So, you know, there's always that claim Friday's a bad night for wrestling. That's why SmackDown's not doing great. Well, this was on a Friday and it did 33 million viewers, which is uh, 33 times, well, maybe not quite it. 15 times what SmackDown's doing today. Mm. But anyway, somehow they knew that this was going to be like a record-breaking audience when the show first started. Yes. So, you know, Honky knew there's going to be all these people watching, and so he decided, I don't want to do a job on national TV. It'll be the end of me. And so he said no, and the Macho Man did not win the Intercontinental title. And we're kind of jumping forward here, but, you know, ultimately the title gets held up. There's a WrestleMania tournament. And the man who was going to win the title in the tournament was the million-dollar man, Ted DiBiase. 
Mm -hmm. He was the original winner. And as happenstance would have it, the honky-tonk man refused to job. Macho Man did not end up with the Intercontinental title. And then the decision was made, well, the Macho Man's going to win this tournament. And in fact, it set up the greatest year of storytelling in the history of WWE, leading to WrestleMania Five. So if Honky would have just done the job here, who even knows how, how history would have changed for WWE? If DiBiase would have won it, and then maybe Hogan would have won it back at SummerSlam or whatever they would have done. But anyway, that's that. The other thing that's interesting, which I have to mention here, and this is one of the bigger stories of this show, even though we've talked about it like a billion times. Do you know, Vinny, do you know that it was common knowledge that Hulk Hogan was going to lose the belt on this live television show? Are you aware of that? Uh, I did not. Um, I think I, everyone knew he was making a movie, but uh, I, think, I thought they figured he'd be work that into his championship schedule. Well, what happened was WWE sent out press to all sorts of media outlets about WrestleMania 4. And in this press packet, it said Hogan attempts to regain Oops. his title. Now, apparently, they didn't even care. Yeah. And all of these radio stations, the radio stations that covered pro wrestling, I mean, for a week, they were talking about Andre's winning the title on main event. On Friday, Dave knew this because it was in his local newspaper, the San Jose Mercury, but it was probably in sports, you know, sports sections across the country. San Jose Mercury, the front page of the sports section on Friday, reported that Andre the Giant was winning the title on the main event tonight from Hulk Hogan. It was everywhere. And the moral of the story is, first off, the idea that people thought it was real till 1989 when Vince yes. testified in New Jersey that it was fake. I mean, it's all bullshit, but everybody knew, and it didn't hurt one <sighs> bit. I'll say. Spoilers getting out meant jack shit in 1988. Much as we have learned, it means jack shit today. But I don't know if you're aware of this or not, Vinny. Next week, Raw and SmackDown, they're all going live again. Oh, hey. Because I guess there's concern. Ha! Huh, well, you know, AEW, they're, they're doing so great on Wednesdays because they're in a bigger building and, you know, they, they, they're live. Every other week or whatever. Mm. Anyway, nobody's learned nothing since 1988 is my no. point. No, that's very clear. But yeah, everybody knew the title was changing, and in fact, it did. It certainly did.